Megalodon. Hi folks, I'm Ignaty Wisniewski. I'm Alex Dow. Today it's Jason Statham versus a humongous prehistoric shark in The Meg. Welcome to Film Club. You know, I like Jason Statham. I like John Turtletaub's National Treasure movies. <laughs> I like the idea of a huge prehistoric shark. <laughs> this movie's got all the ingredients of something that could potentially be stupidly awesome. So uh, why isn't it? Why isn't it more it fun? Is, it is joyless. It's like yeah. watching. It's like you've been conned into notarizing a transaction for <laughs> a bunch of corporations. This is what it feels like more yeah. than a movie. So the meg, megalodon, it's, the, it's an extinct species of shark. It's the largest shark that ever lived. They were probably about 40 feet. 50 feet long. Here they kind of, they say it's about 75 to 90 feet. They got to blow well, it up a little bit. Well, that fluctuates wildly from shot to shot, I feel like. Sometimes the shark looks, there's a moment where we're supposed to be kind of faked out about the shark's death because they've like caught a smaller shark as in Jaws. And at no point uh, in the movie have we been given a consistent sense of how big this thing is anyway, you know? And look, if you're complaining about the size of the shark in the giant <laughs> shark movie, you know, there's a lot of other issues yeah. going on. One of which is that this film has actually a very confusing and overcomplicated plot. Because yeah. if we say that, oh, Jason Statham plays a deep sea diver as to rescue someone who's been trapped at the bottom of the Mariana Trench with a giant shark, that's only part of the movie. It's kind of like the film goes from one, basically the climax of one crappy movie to another to another. Yeah, well, and it takes a good 40 minutes to even get to the shark. You know, I mean, because uh, they're bu they're building characters. They're getting right. me to care about the like thirty different characters in this film. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of them. Um, yeah, the first forty minutes actually plays a lot like kind of a bootleg James Cameron movie. Actually, we have these characters sort of going underwater, and there's a lot of undersea photography and just sort of exploring. It feels a lot like the abyss. And then the giant shark shows up and it turns into, we have to stop this shark. And and that should be, I feel like that should it's be a simple. reliable source It's a no-brainer. It's a sh huge <laughs> yeah. shark. It's going to eat people. You have to kill it. Yeah. But, but I mean, one problem is that it's this movie is PG-13 as well. And obviously the original Jaws got away with a PG rating. And there's plenty that you can do if you're... If you're thinking about how to uh, evocatively shoot a giant monster that's underwater, well, the secret is you uh, just never show it. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, but I'll say that um, I thought I thought of a lot of movies while watching this film. A lot of movies that are better than it, including tons of Jaws ripoffs. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought about the Jurassic World sequel that came out earlier this summer. The opening sequence of that involves that giant prehistoric underwater creature that they introduce in the first Jurassic World, mm -hmm. and that sequence is so much more effective. I mean, not only can the movie not really keep track of the shark or, you know, get us basically scared of this thing, it can mm -hmm. barely keep track of the plot. You've got this marine research station that kind of looks like a, a bunch of hamster tubes underwater <laughs> that's being financed by this tech bro billionaire played by Rain Wilson. Yeah. Um, it's never clear why. It's not really clear why. What the yeah, what's station his is, investment exactly? Why How is, is he, he hoping billions to make of money out of this? <laughs> There's no money to be made in discovering sharks. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, and the environment, too, is such a boring environment and so economically utilized. I mean, this thing, this thing cost $150 million, and I can't imagine why, because for the most part, it plays like a sci-fi original movie. Um, look, Many of which feature megalodons yes, or megalodon-octopus yes, hybrids. Um, except it's not as, it, it is not as reliably dumb fun as that because there's also, there's a maudlin subplot involving a little girl uh, on the ship. There's this whole, this is a movie that really asks us to care about the grief of, of Statham's character and his guilt about some people he's here's, lost. Here's, here's my, I'm not really sure why Jason Statham is in this film. He spends most of the movie inside a sub, staring at screens <laughs> or in various subplots with characters. Not, I, I feel like there's not enough Jason Statham versus a shark action. For sure. And I've been saying since seeing it that I really feel like this thing either needed to, to be a lot smarter than it is or a lot stupider. 
Yeah, I didn't find the shark itself very convincing, which isn't the end of the world, you know. I mean, you, you go to a, a movie like this and you don't necessarily expect uh, to believe to believe in the monster, uh, so long as it looks cool and it's doing cool things. But I yeah. do, I do think that the uh, that the PG thirteen really hampers the amount of mayhem we can get out of this thing. There, there's a whole sequence where this giant shark is is sort of moving in on this on this very heavily populated beach. And we're just It's the best part of the movie because you're you're anticipating some kind of like kind of piranha style sadistic mayhem. But it's there's like come. a little Yorkie dog in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a chubby little kid in a floaty. There's some stupid looking guy in a hamster ball. Like yeah. at this point, you develop so much contempt for all of the named characters in the film that you just want the shark to just eat everyone. But it can't deliver on that moment. You know, we get these quick cutaway attacks and it, ba- it you know, it barely does any damage in that moment. It's, it's not hard to root for the giant shark in this movie, but the giant shark doesn't really get his due. 